Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the game where we aim for the obscure and we ignore the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, my name's Martin, this is my partner Jane and we're from Manchester. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Brenda from London and this is my friend Gary from Walton Cross. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Sally, this is my boyfriend Carl and we're from Beckenham in Kent. And finally, couple number four. Hi, my name's Gareth, this is my son Hugh and we're from Reading. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce here to get the show on the road, which should be fun as he can't drive. It's my pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hiya. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, first two podiums, once again, are our returning pairs. Yeah. And Gary and Brenda got through to the head-to-head, -head, and Jane gave us a pointless answer in round one as well. And Gary and Brenda gave us a pointless answer in the jackpot booster round. So, two pointless answers on those first two podiums. Yeah. Pretty impressive, isn't it? You wouldn't want to be on podiums three and four today, would you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you Whoa. wouldn't. No. Unless, say, for example, there was a nice little jackpot building up. That'd oh, be, that'd make it fun. That would be fun. Yeah. I don't know if that's the case. I forget what happened last time. Well, OK, this is the story. Helen and Katie went through to the final, didn't win the jackpot, so we're adding another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts off at £6,750. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Fighters. At the end of every round, remember, we will be eliminating the highest scoring pair. So you know what you have to do to avoid being that pair. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Foreign language sport. You can all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second. And whoever's going first, will they please step up to the podium? OK, and the question concerns... Olympic sports in French. Richard. On each board, Zander is going to pronounce seven sports, uh, seven Olympic sports, but in French. But what are these sports, please? OK. What are these Olympic sports? Here they are in French. Nous avons le hockey sur glace, le saut à la perche, le cyclisme, la voile, le javelot, le natation et la lutte gréco-romaine. I'll read those all again. Le hockey sur glace, le saut à la perche, le cyclisme, la voile, le javelot, le natation et la lutte gréco-romaine. Oh, <laughs> come now. Très bien. Uh -huh. Très, très, très bien. Oh, merci bien. Zut, alors. Ah! So, Martin, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Martin. Uh, I'm Martin. Um, I work as a clinical scientist in Manchester. Uh, in my spare time, I like to run a lot and also eat and drink a lot as well. But you have to if you run a lot. Well, that's it. You it's have sort of, to. It started off as just a way to sort of lose weight and then just sort of... And you were bitten. You got it. I just, I just, it just caught me. The running fever just got me and now... As somebody who doesn't run at all, how much do you have to run to break through that barrier of thinking, oh, I hate this? Uh, well, I'm currently uh, training for a marathon, so <gasps> I'm sort of running 60 miles a week at the minute. So it's sort oh, of a lot of hard work and sort of yeah. late night running and getting up early just to try and squeeze it all in. Notice he didn't answer my question. <laughs> yeah. So busy, yeah. Yeah. He's so running mad. Oh, he's running crazy. He's running, he's running mad. Uh, Martin, what are you going to go for on our board of French sports? Uh, it isn't a fantastic board for me. Uh, uh, I can only just speak English, never mind French. So I think I'm going to go for javelin. Le javelin. Le javelot? Le javelot. Javelin. Javelin. Let's see if it's right. How many of our 100 said javelin? Phew, it's right. Down he goes to 63. That could be a lot worse. Not bad. 63 gets us off to a solid start. The French have never won an Olympic medal in javelin. Unlike certain countries I can mention, i.e. us, mm -hmm. we won many. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. I can't take a lot of the credit, but, uh, Still, you know, it's my country. Yeah. Uh, 1986, they moved the centre of gravity forward in the javelin by four centimetres because they got to the point where they were throwing it further than the length of the javelin thing inside the stadium, so people were That's suddenly runners were going to get injured. Wow. Sometimes I would think I wouldn't mind moving my centre of gravity by about four centimetres. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Sometimes I think it'd be, I'd have oh, it'd better throw balance. You. It would throw you. It would throw you like a javelin. You reckon? Yeah. I think it'd be good to just be slightly more low slung. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gary, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Gary. 
Yeah, I teach uh, theatre workshops in London and uh, in Italy, and uh, I do some tour guiding as well, bespoke tour guiding. What do you do in your theatre workshops? Um, mostly Shakespeare, but um, we do a little bit of Harry Potter sometimes, or... All the greats. Lion King. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's, I mean, do you have a sort of standard Shakespeare that you like to work on? Or, yeah, or do you Italy, work through the whole? It tends to be Romeo and Juliet or, Why not? or Macbeth. Exactly. Or, yeah, something that kids can get excited about. OK, very good. Now, Gary, what are you going to go for? OK, I'll go for the last one. La Luta Greco Roman, uh, Greco Roman Wrestling. Greco Roman Wrestling, says Gary. Well, stands to reason. Let's see. It's right. And it passes 63. And down it goes to 17. And there we are, that's a gift, isn't it? Surely, 17 for La Lutte greco romaine uh, Oui, oui, très bien. Uh, bien sûr. Uh, in the 1912 Olympics, the semi final in the middleweight uh, Greco Roman wrestling lasted 11 hours. Oh, Lord. Oh. That must have just been exhausting to watch, let alone be in. Can you imagine? <sighs> there you go. Uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Sally, welcome to Pointless. Um, tell us all about yourself. So, um, I work in payroll for a big uh, media organisation in London. Ah, oh, and what do you do when you're not doing that? When I'm not doing that, um, I go to the gym quite a lot with my boyfriend just here. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I, I go out and um, socialise with friends, go to the theatre... Excellent. ..every week, yeah. Very nice indeed. Now, Sally, the, le sport français. So, it's not great. I mean, I got GCSE French, but that's about it. Um, I think I'm going to go with the top one and I'm going to say ice hockey. Surely. Surely. It's either that or ice cream hockey. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, let's see. How many of our 100 people said ice hockey? 63 is our high score. And you passed that. 60. 60 for ice hockey. Yeah, France have never won an ice hockey medal either. I'm beginning to wonder what they what have, have won they a medal in. Won. Mm. Mm, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, Hugh, welcome. Hello. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Hugh. Uh, yeah, so I work at an automotive uh, company in logistics. And by logistics, what, what, getting cars out to dealerships or to...? Uh, putting the parts in the right place so that we can... Oh, that's important. Cars. That's handy. Yeah. That's got to happen. One wheel on each corner. Something like that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. We're not doing very well at that, though, so... That's how you make a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hugh, how yes. is your French? Um, so, it could be better. Top one, no idea. Following one, cycling, Le Voix, I, no idea. But I think the uh, La Natation is swimming, and I think I'm going to go for that. OK, Hugh is going to say swimming for La Natation. Let's see if it's right. It is right. 63, still our high score, and you pass it. 13 for swimming. <laughs> Lowest score of the past, Hugh. Look at that. Uh, well, Pete, and we finally found an event where France have won a gold medal. Because yeah. in, the, in the 1900 Olympics, Charles de Vendeville uh, won the only ever gold medal in underwater swimming. Wow. Oui. Le Vendeville. Uh, Charles de Vendeville. De Vendeville. Oui. It's good, huh? Yes, it's that. Imagine I speak in French. Should we go through the boards? Yeah. But in French? Yeah. Le cyclisme? Cycling. How you say in England? Yeah, cycling. cycling yeah. 68 points. La voile is uh, sailing. Is oh, with you would say in England. Boat with uh, yeah, sailing. Yeah, underwater. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, cinq points pour uh, la voile. What? Eh, le, oh. uh, le, the final one. Ah, <laughs> it's the, uh, the vaulting with the pole. Pole. Pole vault. You're yes. absolutely right. That's a pointless answer as well. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Um, there we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, we're two. halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 13. I mean, what about that, Hugh? Very well done indeed. Best Thank score you. of the past there. Um, and um, Martin and Jane are on the high score there, at the top here. So good luck with your choice, Jane. Let's hope there's something peachy for you left on the board to keep you in the game. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put seven more Olympic sports up on the board in French. And here they are. We have got... Le sport équestre, l'haltérophilie, le tennis de table, l'escrime, la boxe, le plongeon et le volleyball de plage. I'll read those all again. Le sport équestre, l'haltérophilie, le tennis de table, l'escrime, la boxe, le plongeon, le volleyball de plage. 
There we are. Um, now, Gareth, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. From Reading. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Tell us all about yourself in Reading, Gareth. Uh, well, I uh, am a software developer. I uh, work in London for a what sort of, company. What sort of software are you making? Uh, over the years, I've developed uh, a lot of different applications, but at the moment, it's uh, for a, a financial company with their it's very tedious back office systems, uh, making sure that uh, they all work. So that, that was vital. Uh, yeah. Vital. I'm a very good for you. Uh, now, 13 is where Hugh has left you, yeah. um, which is pretty good. It means 49 or less gets you into round two. Even right. that. OK. I'd say uh, le plongeon diving. Diving for le plongeon. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. There's your red line. It's right. Good enough to get you through even now. Down against 14. Very well done indeed. Great play on that far podium. 27 is your total. Very nicely played. When uh, diving was first in the Olympics in 1904, there were two disciplines. One, the 10-metre platform, which is the one we're very familiar with now, but the other was a dive from the side of the pool for distance. So you would dive and then glide for as far as you could go. Ooh. Yeah. 19 metres. William Dickey. Clever Dickey. Yeah, he just. <laughs> yeah, thank you yeah. very much indeed. So, uh, now, Kyle, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you. Tell us all about yourself. By day, I work for a fitness training provider. Um, yes, but... I also am a professional wrestler. <gasps> wow. Um, what's your wrestling name? Um, I'm the hip star. Because the beard, of yeah, course. Yeah, easy the target. Star. Yeah. What's your thing when you come on? What do you do? The hip uh, star? Just look mean, pick on I mean, kids, okay. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, along those lines. What's your costume? Um, small pants. Small pants. Yeah. And a massive coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely, yeah. That's a hipster. Yeah, Beautiful. the hipster. <laughs> Flat white! <laughs> Kyle, you are on 60. At this stage, you need to score two. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the risk yeah, of the easy ones in my mind and say Le Sport Equest is equestrian. Let's find out. Here is your red line. It's quite low. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Let's see if it's right. It's right. <sighs> Danny is to 54, taking your total up to 114. Yeah, they won the team eventing and the team jumping at the uh, the Rio Olympics. What's French for horse? Cheval. Cheval. Oui. Oui. Chevalier is a. Mais non. Someone who, who rides a horse. Like, well, yeah. So Maurice Chevalier is Maurice horse rider. Yeah, basically Maurice horseman. Yeah. Wow, it sounds like an old car. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice horseman. That's yeah. how I got in this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Okay, now Brenda, uh, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Brenda. I work in a school as a supply teaching assistant, and I also act. Um, so when you're supply teaching, that can be, is that at primary level? Yeah. And uh, how far is the radius within which you're expected to go and work? Are they sort of generally within a small area, or might you Between, be sent somewhere? Yeah, it could be um, anywhere in North London or in Kent. And... Oh, I see, that's quite that's a massive radius. Yeah. You just turn up. I mean, is there, is there anywhere you've been back to since? You've, you've made friends and go back, or is it starting afresh each time? Yeah, it started fresh a lot of the yeah. time. It's hard to make friends because you see them and then when you go back there, they might not be there. So. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. Anyway, Brenda, there you are, you're on 17. Here's good news. 96 or less gets you into round two. OK. What are you going to go for? I'd go for Le Volleyball de Plage, which is beach volleyball. You've got to hope. Let's see, here is your red line, nice and high. Let's see how many of our 100 people said beach volleyball. It's right. Wow, 33 <laughs> takes your total up to a lovely round 50. Uh, 1996, first time beach volleyball was played in the Olympics. I'm not absolutely certain about it as a discipline. No. No. I mean, I see why it's on telly. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But I don't know, you've already got volleyball. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Don't really have to do it on the beach as well. They don't do beach pole vault, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> Not a bad no, idea, no. actually. A sort de la perche. Um, anyway, thank you. Uh, Jane. Jane, 63 is your score. 50 is what you have to score here. Uh, remind us all about yourself before you give your answer. Um, I'm a regulatory affairs specialist for a biotech company. Um, in my spare time, I play a lot of netball. I like to do some cooking as well. 
Good stuff. What sort of cooking do you like to do? Um, try to do a bit of Japanese cooking. Do you? Yeah. Sort wow. of mixed success. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but still eat it. Uh, excellent. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, Jane, 63 is where you are. 50 is what we need from you. There's a board. Do you fancy talking us through it? So I assume the box is boxing, tennis to table, table tennis. But I think I'm going to have to take some sort of gas to get us through. I think I'll go for halter and violence hammer. OK, la terrophilie. La terrophilie, I'm <laughs> something like that, uh, for hammer throwing. Let's see if it's yeah. right. Here is your red line. Can you get below that red line with hammer throwing? Oh, bad luck, Jane. That was a very brave thing to do, but I'm afraid it was a wrong answer. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 163. But it is exactly what you had to do, because the two you knew would have been too uh, many points. La box is boxing. That would have scored you 61, and uh, La Tennis de Table, which should score 100. Surely. But uh, score 64. I mean, literally, that's just... It's got, it's got table and table. tennis in the... It's, it's all there. It's all there. Right. It's yeah. all there. L'escrime, let's do that first. Do you know L'escrime? No. It's fencing. Three points for that. Now, this last one, so it is not hammer throw. I thought maybe it was high jump. Well, I, I mean, uh, Philly is, is love of something. Yeah. Phil and a halter, someone who loves a halter. A halter. Well, that, an alter, alter is French for uh, dumbbell or barbell. Oh. And so this weightlifting. weightlifting. Very well done if you said that. It's a pointless answer. Yeah. Wow. Uh, thank that. you very much indeed. Uh, so we are at the end of our first round, which means you have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Oh, Jane and Martin, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You gave us a pointless answer last time, and here we are sending you home at the end of the first round. Anyway, it's been lovely having you here. Thank you so much for playing, Jane and thank Martin. You. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> Look at that. Here we are in round two, and you'll have noticed we're now down to three pairs. I wasn't joking when I said we eliminated the high scorers. Hugh, our lowest scorer in that round, so very well done indeed. In fact, Gareth, you're only one point ahead of Hugh, uh, so our lowest scoring pair over there on the far podium. But best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Historical cinema. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Famous people who've been played by Oscar-winning actors. Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you uh, eight famous faces on each board. We're also going to show you the, uh, the name of the person who won an Oscar for portraying them in a film. You just have to tell us, though, who these famous people are. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so here is our first board of clues. Who are the famous people played by these Oscar-winning actors? Meryl Streep, 2012. Jamie Foxx, 2005. Charles Lawton, 1934. George Arliss, 1930. Kate Blanchett, 2005. Barbara Streisand, 1969. Sissy Spacek, 1981. And Ben Kingsley, 1983. There we are. Gary. OK, um, it's not too bad. Uh, I'll go for Barbara Streisand and say uh, Fanny Bryce. OK, Fanny Bryce for the bottom left. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Fanny Bryce. Fanny Bryce is right. That's a great answer. This goes down to one. Very well done, Gary. What a start to the round. One for Fanny Bryce. Terrific work, Gary. Yeah, uh, Streisand played Fanny Bryce, the comedian in Funny Girl. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Kyle. Yeah, um, again, it's a running theme, but I, I know the easy ones. It's picking the more obscure, easy ones. Um, I'm going to go for Ben Kingsley, 1983, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. OK, Mahatma Gandhi says, Kyle, let's see how many of our 100 people said Mahatma Gandhi. It's right. Down goes to 66. <laughs> yeah, won eight Oscars, the film, uh, for Gandhi, including Best Picture. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, now then, Gareth, do oh. you want to talk us through that board? <laughs> Well, there are some easy ones. I think uh, we've got Margaret Thatcher, Henry VIII. Um, I'd say uh, 
Ray Charles. OK, Ray Charles. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Ray Charles. Ray Charles is right. That takes you down to 42. Yeah, throughout that film, he lip syncs Jamie Foxx to um, Ray Charles' actual vocals, but he plays the piano himself. I, I knew he played the piano. I didn't realise he was lip syncing. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, shall we fill in the rest of this board? Yeah. Do you recognise on the top left? Uh, Margaret Thatcher. Well done, yeah. yeah. Um, she would have scored you 94 points. Charles Lawton played. Henry VIII. Henry VIII. 86 points for that. George Arliss. I don't think it is, but I want to say Charles Dickens. It's not, is it? It is um, not. It's another British Prime Minister, Benjamin Disraeli. OK, yes. Who we'll scored three points. Uh, Kate Blanchett. Catherine Hepburn. And Catherine Hepburn, first person ever to win an Oscar uh, for playing an Oscar winner. 12 points. And Sissy Spacek, Loretta Lynn. Oh, God, I was so scored one point. Very well done if you said that. So Fanny Bryce and Loretta Lynn, the best answers on that board. Thank you very much indeed. That means we're halfway through the round, which also means it's time to take a look at those scores. One, the best score of the past, Gary. Very well done, you. And 66 is where we find Carl and Sally. So, Sally, let's hope there's a nice low-scoring one on the next board that you know. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put eight more pictures up on the board, and here they are. We've got Rami Malek, 2019. Robert De Niro, 1981, Marion Cotillard, 2008, Nicole Kidman, 2003, Olivia Colman, 2019, Daniel Day-Lewis, 2013, Eddie Redmayne, 2015, and Sean Penn, 2009. There we are. All these famous people have been played by Oscar-winning actors. Hugh. Yes. Um... There's three that stand out. I, yeah, I don't know which one's going to be the most high-scoring of those three. I think I'm going to play it safe. Abraham Lincoln for the bottom left. OK, Abraham Lincoln for Daniel Day-Lewis. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Abraham Lincoln. There is your red line. That's right. Ooh, not bad. 24. You needed 23, we've got 24. It takes your total up to 66. It's possible he's less recognisable without his big hat. That might be why they only scored mm. 24. Yeah, that's where Daniel Day-Lewis became the first actor ever to win three Best Actor Oscars. Mm. Amazing. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now then, Sally. Ideally, we're looking for a pointless answer here from you. I don't think I'm going to be able to give that because it's not a very good board. The board before was probably a better board for me, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to have to go for one that I know, but I know it's going to be too high. I'm going to go for Stephen Hawking. OK, Stephen Hawking for um, Eddie Redmayne. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Your red line is sort of... You have to imagine it there. <laughs> Down to 12. <laughs> 78. And you're a total. It's a surprisingly low score for... Isn't it? ..a picture of Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Curious. I think we got a lot of the uh, tennis to Tambla respondents to uh, think, answer yeah. that one, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Brenda, uh, we're looking for a score of 76 or less from you here. Do you fancy talking us through the board? Um, Rami Melek is Freddie Mercury. Robert De Niro, I think it's something like Ray DeMotto or Motti. Olivia Colman, I saw the film and I can't remember which queen she is. Um, Sean Penn was um, a film called Milk, but I can't remember the... Name of the man, but I'll go for Edith Piaf. OK, Edith Piaf for Marion Cotillard. Let's see if that is right. There's your red line. Let's see how many of our 100 said Edith Piaf. There we are. Very well done indeed. That gets you through with plenty of room to spare. Down again to seven, taking your total up to eight. Fabulous. Very well played, Brenda. You are right about Rami Malek, Pretty Mercury. Would have scored 56. You were getting there with, with the Robert De Niro one. Uh, it's Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull, of course. And that would have scored two. Uh, Nicole Kidman plays... Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf would have scored four. I was exactly the same with you with Olivia Colman. I saw the film and I was thinking, <laughs> I don't remember. Queen Anne. Queen Anne, oh, Queen. I think it was. And Queen Anne would have scored you four. You're right about the film at the bottom as well. It was Milk. It's Harvey Milk and would have scored one point. So that's the best answer on the board. Well done if you said that. 
Thank you very much indeed. So we're at the end of our second round and we have to say goodbye to another pair. Sally and Kyle, I'm afraid you are that pair. This is where we say goodbye to you, but you'll be back next time when let's hope you can take it further. Uh, but thank you very much. Meantime, Sally and Kyle. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so congratulations, Gary and Brenda, Hugh and Gareth. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £6,750. But before we do the head-to-head, -head, shall we just see if we can't swell that jackpot a bit by finding some pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many styles of facial hair as they could. Uh, yeah, welcome to the jackpot booster round. We're going to show you six styles of facial hair. Two of them are pointless answers. They'll add £250 to the jackpot. Two of them, however, are red herrings. We made them up. Try and avoid those. See if you can guess uh, both of them at home. £250 for each one that you find. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so here are our six potential styles of facial hair. Let's see if we can find the pointless ones in here. Bysus, French Fork, Shenandoah, Chevron, Tamarin and Balbo. Gary and Brenda, you go first. Shenandoah was oh, a western. There might be styling Do you think? No, they didn't have it. No? Oh. You know, on motorways, they have the little arrows. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's my that... bit. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've got. Yeah, I think that would be one. <laughs> yeah. OK, we'll go uh, Chevron. <laughs> Chevron. Let's find out. Chevron. Is it a pointless facial hairstyle? It's definitely a facial hairstyle. Oh, no, it goes down to two. All the way down, but just not quite over the line now. Um, Hugh and Gareth, what are you going to go for? <laughs> Basis? You said that. It sounds as though it should be a, uh, you know, a correct term. Yeah. Let's go with Basis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Basis. Uh, let's see, is Basis a pointless style of facial hair? Oh no, bad luck. Bad luck. Oh well. So there are still two pointless answers out there, so very well done at home. If none of yours have been mentioned yet, you're still in with a shout. Um, Balbo scores points. Balbo is a, a beard without sideburns and a floating moustache. And a floating moustache? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. That's, a, that's an eyebrow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you've got to be very careful. You've got to be so good. You've constantly got to be yeah. holding Way it down. Way bring it down again. Um, that would have scored one point. So there's two pointless answers here, one incorrect answer. What do you reckon the incorrect okay. answer is? Well, French Fork sounds like it sounds plausible. Shenandoah sounds plausible. Tamarind sounds like a fruit. Tamarind is a monkey, which has a distinctive oh. white moustache. So that's the incorrect answer. Shenandoah and French Fork, both pointless answers. Very well done if you said them. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, bad luck. We didn't manage to find any pointless answers, but we had some fun. And we learned a lot about styles of facial hair. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Our first question this afternoon is all about... interviews, Richard. Yes, simply five clues to facts about interviews or having something to do with interviews. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five interview clues, and here they are. In a 1966 interview, this singer remarked that his band was more popular than Jesus, US author of the novel Interview with the Vampire, puppet controlled by Rod Hull that attacked Michael Parkinson in a 1976 edition of his chat show, US professor based in South Korea whose BBC interview in 2017 was interrupted by his children walking in, and the US president interviewed by David Frost in 1977, the subject of a 2008 film starring Frank Langella and Michael Sheen. OK, Gary and Brenda, you go first. OK. OK, what are you going to go for? Um, the US president, uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, say Gary and Brenda. Now, Hugh and Gareth. Mm. Do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? So, so the it's, it's down to me, is it? <laughs> the Beatles, maybe? You could be. Mick Jagger, maybe? The it puppet is, is, is Emu. US professor, I can't for the life of me remember who, uh, you know, what his name was. I think we're going to have to go for... Emu? I think Emu. OK, Emu. So we have Richard Nixon and we have Emu. Um, Gary and Brenda went for Richard Nixon. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that for the interview with David Frost. 
Richard Nixon is right. He takes it down to 38. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hugh and Gareth have gone for Emu for the Rod Hull puppet. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Emu. It's right. And that all oh, 77 for Emu, popular one. Which means Gary and Brenda, after one question, you're up 1 0. Richard Nixon and Emu. It's a very successful act during the, during the late 70s. The singer was John Lennon. John Lennon was scored 43. Do you remember the uh, author of Interview with the Vampire? No. Anne Rice. No. Scored you nine points. Now, this is one that's interesting, this US professor, because everybody has seen it. But has anyone retained the name? Well, none of our hundred retained the name. So if you have, you just got a pointless answer. And it was Robert Kelly. Very well done, if you remembered that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Hugh yeah. and Gareth, you have to win this one. Stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question today is all about... ..flags containing four or more colours, Richard. Uh, yep, yeah, five colourful flags now, but which countries do they represent? OK, let's reveal our five flags, and here they come. We've got... ..A... ..B... C. D. And E. There we are. Five colourful flags. Which countries are they the flags of? Now, Hugh and Gareth, it's you first. Sorry, OK. Um, looks like we don't know A or E. So, yeah, because Dad doesn't know C, and I do. Maybe that means other people won't. <laughs> so, South Korea for C. South Korea for C, say Hugh and Gareth. Now, Gary and Brenda, do you want to talk us through the others? Uh, yeah, A, I don't know. B, B Brazil. Brazil. D, South, South Africa. Africa. E, I feel I've seen it, but no. Uh, South Africa. Yeah, South Africa. OK, we're going to go D. D, South Africa. OK, so we have South Korea versus South Africa. Uh, Hugh and Gareth went South Korea for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. South Korea is right. And down it goes to 31. Very well done. Good score there. <laughs> Gary and Brenda, meanwhile, have gone for D and said South Africa. Let's see if that's right. It is, of course, South Africa. And that goes down to 46. So, well done, Hugh and Gareth. Just what you needed. Back in the game after two questions, it's one all. Yeah, it's all about the first one and the last one there, really, isn't it? Because uh, B, you're quite right, is Brazil. That's the biggest scorer of all, 72 points for that. E is the second best score up there. It's an island group, Seychelles. Ah, oh, good. Yeah, five nice. points for the Seychelles. And the best answer on the board, another uh, island group, the Comoros. Very well done if you said that one point for Comoros. Thank you very much indeed. OK, it all comes down to our third question. This will decide who goes through to the final and uh, plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question in the head-to-head -head is all about Santa's reindeer. <laughs> Rich. You see, the names now are five of Santa's reindeer, but in the form of anagrams. Can you tell us who these reindeer are, please? Yes, tell us who these reindeer are. Five of them, hidden in anagram form. And we have got... Shed, Narc Rep, Craned, Cot Me and Invex. Shed, Narc Rep, Craned, Cot Me and Invex. There we are. Gary and Brenda will go first again. Okay. Yeah, OK. Yeah, we go, um, Dasher. The, the top one. OK, the top one, Dasher, say Gary and Brenda. OK, now, Hugh and Gareth, it's over to you. Can you talk us through that board? Yeah, so Prancer, um, Dancer, Comet, Vixen. I don't know what's, which well, one think... reached out to me less. Prancer, because it's, it's maybe two words. It might... Yeah, yeah that's, should we go that? Prancer? Yeah, okay. I'm happy with that. OK, right. we'll <laughs> go for Prancer. So we have Dasher and we have Prancer. Um, Gary and Brenda went for Dasher. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Dasher for shared. It's right. That takes you down to 43. 
Meanwhile, Hugh and Gareth have gone for Prancer for Narc Rep. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Prancer. Prancer is right. Oh, oh. No, 56 for Prancer. Oh. <laughs> Which means Gary and Brenda, very well done indeed. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, that was one of those ones I think everyone could work out. All of them, it's just working out the best scorer. And funnily enough, you got the best possible scorer and you gave the second best possible scorer. So uh, you couldn't do anything better than that. Dancer would have scored 57. Comet would have scored 60. And Vixen would have scored 81. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, it's Hugh and Gareth. You've done incredibly well, though, um, and very, very tight scoring in the head-to-head, -head, which bodes very well for your return next show. But uh, meanwhile, thank you very thank much you, for playing. Hugh and Gareth. <laughs> but for Gary and Brenda, it is now time for our pointless fight. <laughs> well, congratulations, Gary and Brenda. You've seen off all the competition and you are taking home our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £6,750. <laughs> What's going to win it for you? What do you need to see come up on that board? Films, mm. tennis, um, yeah. music. Disaster mm. movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something about Arsenal, maybe? Or... <laughs> OK, well, let's see. <laughs> let's see. As ever, you have to choose a category from these four. Here's today's list. We've got international football scorers in 2019, the year 1958, electronic and synth pop acts, and brightest astronomical objects. What do we think? Mm. Not for me, not uh, <laughs> football. football. good for you. I don't know. I could have a go. 1958, don't know. No. Electronic, no. Um, yeah. Football, no. Shall I try? Yeah. Okay, here we go with international football scores okay, in 2019. Scorers. Okay, we're looking for the name of anyone who scored two or more goals in any of the following tournaments. Uh, these are essentially the versions of the European Championships, but for other continents. So uh, the Gold Cup, which is uh, America, Caribbean, etc. Anyone who scored two or more goals in the Copa America, South American Championships, or anyone who scored two or more in the Africa. Cup of Nations. So the uh, 2019 Gold Cup, Copper America, or African Cup of Nations. Anyone who scored two or more goals? Very best of luck. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So the um, Africans, uh, Aubameyang, maybe, uh -huh. uh, Moussala, <coughs> uh, the African Mane. The African players. Yeah. Um, Copper America. Messi's too obvious. Uh -huh. um, think of Brazilian players, rather Argentinian players. Yeah. Aguero. Ronaldo. Yeah, okay. Aguero from America. Gold Cup. I'm not sure. Um, any more African players? Or any other <laughs> South American players? Oh, Alexis Sanchez, South America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd be a good one. So yeah. I think Alexis Sanchez, maybe Obama Young. Yeah. And um, uh Monsala. I think Marley would be better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ten Two. seconds left. Yeah, okay. Obama Young. And we'll see. Uh, Sanchez. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, there is your minute just running out there. So you've got your three answers. Yeah. What are they? Uh Obama Yang. Obama Yang. Um uh, uh Marley. Mane. And uh, Alexis Sanchez. And Alexis Sanchez. Are these are all in which category? They're all... Uh, the, Alexis Sanchez is in the Copa America. Copa America for Sanchez. And the other two are in the Africa Cup of Nations. The other two Cup of Nations. OK. Um, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Um, if he played in it, Obama Yang. Obama Yang will put last. Least likely to be pointless? Um, Mane. Mane. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We've got Mane, Sanchez and Aubameyang. Well, very, very best luck. Three good answers there. If one of those turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for you, what would you like to do with it? £6,750. I'd love to buy a piano. Oh, what a lovely thing to buy. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Gary, how about you? Um, a lot of theatre trips, but also, as it's a football question, buy an Arsenal season ticket. Well, of course. <laughs>
Of course. OK, well, let's put these to the test. Mane was your first answer. In this case, we were looking for any player who scored two or more goals in the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. How many of our 100 said Mane? If it's pointless, £6,750 is yours. Mane is right. If Mane takes us all the way down to zero, you leave here with that jackpot of £6,750. Down we go. Almost in six figures. Oh, oh nine. <laughs> OK, that's a great answer, by the way. Sanchez is your next answer. And we are now looking for players who scored two or more goals in the Copa America. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sanchez for £6,750. Is he pointless? Again, it's a correct answer. Mane took us all the way down to nine. Sanchez now takes us down through the 20s, into the teens. Down we go, still passing now, and still going down, still three. <laughs> OK, we're now back with the Africa Cup of Nations. You've gone for Obama Yang. This was the answer you thought. If it was right, it was probably your best shot. But pointless. Let's see. For £6,750, how many of our 100 people said Obama Yang? Oh, no! Bad luck! <laughs> Bad luck! Well... Oh, you took us to the brink there, Gary and Brenda. Very well done indeed. But unfortunately, you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer. So I'm afraid you won't be taking home today's jackpot, but you do take home a pointless trophy each. And very, very well done. You played exceedingly well. It's very yeah, good. it's very well played. It's tough in that 60 seconds. And Aubameyang uh, plays for Gabon, and they didn't qualify for the oh, African okay. Cup of Nations, but uh, a perfectly good guess. Uh, let's take you through the pointless answers in the different categories. Start with the um, Gold Cup, Aaron Long. The USA player, Gina Hoylet, scored a couple of goals for Canada. Another Canadian, Lucas uh, Cavallini, Uriel Antuna, the Mexican, uh, he scored four goals. The big scorers there, Ralph Jimenez would have scored you two. Pulisic, the, uh, the Chelsea player, would have scored you one point. Uh, another Copa America, Darwin Matches of Venezuela, Edison Flores of Peru. There's Koji Miyoshi of Japan, who were a guest team at the Copa America, and Paolo Guerrero. And finally, the African Cup of Nations. The Algerian uh, Unas was a pointless answer. El Mohamedi, who played for all sorts of teams in the, in the UK, Mohamedi. Uh, Cedric Bakambu and Stefan Bahokan, all of those were pointless answers. Salah, Mane, Mares, Igalo, uh, Wilfred Zaha, Jordan Ayew, they're the only ones who scored points there. Uh, all the other answers would have been pointless. Very well done if you got one at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thank you, Gary and Brenda. I'm sorry we didn't win our jackpot today. That will therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £7,750. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.